Hey everyone, my name is Sam and welcome to my channel. If you are a subscriber, welcome back. And if you are new, hi. So this video, I thought I would just kind of sit down and talk to you guys about I don't even know where to start. I do apologize if my videos are a little blurry. I'm still trying to work out the kinks. Whenever I look into my viewfinder, it looks clear as day. And then I've noticed that when I get it on my computer to edit it and play it back, it kind of looks fuzzy. So I'm a little bit closer than normal. Um, so sorry if it hurts your eyes because I know it kind of bothers me when I watch the playback. I just wanted to um, sit down with you guys and kind of just give you an update on everything that's been going on with my mom. You guys know back in, I think it was September that I kind of did an update on her or just talked about everything I was going through. Um, I'm just going to ramble so here goes nothing. So she had surgery on September the 11th and I took her to the hospital and everything and they got her ready for surgery and we were both super super nervous and really scared and I was worried that something would happen. Anesthesia affects everyone. I was really nervous about that. Um, I was also worried that what if we regret this, what if it was the wrong decision. And so I remembered that they were kind of getting her ready for everything and we had to like split off um, in this hallway where she went one way and then I had to go the other way and it was just me and her and her nurse, you know, and we were just saying our see you laters and everything. We both got emotional and just thinking about it, it's kind of sad, but you know, I just wanted her to be okay and I wanted to be stronger. I just wanted her to think that, you know, oh, my daughter's pretty confident I can do this but I was scared as hell. I go in the lobby room there by myself and it was really hard just because Donnie did have to go to work and I understand that and I wasn't needing him. I mean, I wanted him there, but it wasn't like a necessary thing. You know, I was like, it's fine. I can handle it by myself. Don't worry about it. It really got to me because there were so many families that were there waiting for a family member to get done with surgery and it was obvious that I was there by myself because everyone was in groups of five and more. I remember I was sitting in my chair by myself, you know, and this group of sisters came over and they were like, hey, are you here by yourself? Who's having surgery? You know, kind of tell them. I tell them about my mom's cancer and I say that she's having a craniotomy and they're like, oh my gosh, you know, and they kind of freak out, which it makes me freak out. They were just all talking to me and trying to comfort me and it was so nice of them. They were just trying to include me in all of their conversations that they were having with their sisters. Hour after hour after hour, you know, it goes by. And I'm wondering why I'm not hearing anything, you know, I'm looking on the computer screen and seeing where she's at in the phase of having surgery, um, given anesthesia, waking up or whatever. My friend, Alicia, she was texting me, you know, and she's like, do you want me to come up there? I can come up there. Um, after I get off, it's a half day, you know, and I, at the time, I really didn't want anyone to come up just because every time I talked about anything, like, I would just cry, and I was like, you know what, I really don't want to have to deal with that, you know, and try and be strong when I'm already worried about her being okay during surgery. But you know what, I was like, it's very nice of her to offer, so I'm just gonna say yeah. So she comes up or whatever and you know, hanging out and then eventually Donnie gets off work and he comes up and then his mom comes up. It's about maybe four o'clock now, five o'clock, and then it's 5.30 and they finally said, you know, she got done with surgery, she's waking up from anesthesia. So um, about maybe two hours go by and I'm wondering why I haven't heard anything and I ask the lady and so she calls back there to see and um, apparently she was having some problems waking up from anesthesia where she was having um, arrhythmic heartbeats and um, they weren't sure if she was going to be okay or if it was a heart attack or what. They kept her for a little bit longer and then eventually we got to see her. Um, and so when I saw her, I mean, it was completely weird. It freaked me out, you guys, because she was still just completely out of it. 
and I know that when you're older anesthesia does affect you differently and it depends on your health and everything like that but you know she had no sense of awareness jumping forward you know each day goes by and she's still not able to talk she's not able to keep her eyes open she's not able to use the restroom on her own feed herself and so I stayed up there all the time because I wanted to make sure that the nurses were taking care of her. She's out of it. She has to have people take care of her. And so I was up there all the time. I didn't feel obligated, but I wanted to make sure that they were really taking care of her. I mean, you know, if it was your mom or your dad, your brother or sister, I'm pretty positive you would do the same thing too. Because it's, what's that saying? You know, it's not going to get done right unless I do it myself. But I'm not a nurse. I'm not a doctor. But, you know, I... I'm an extra set of eyes for her while she's not knowing what's going on. A few days after that, you know, she's still in the room that she's been in. The surgeon comes by to check on her and the surgeon's assistant. I don't know her title. She is a doctor. She assisted with the surgeon. She completely acted unprofessional. She was like, why is your mom like this? What's going on? As if I'm the one that's supposed to know. And so I start freaking out and I'm like, I've been telling you guys that she's been like this. I've been reporting to the nurses, her status, how well she's not been improving. And so she's like snapping in my mom's face and she's yelling her name and my mom's still completely out of it, doesn't know what the heck's going on. It's just not her when you look at her, it's not even her. And so she's like snapping in my mom's face and she's yelling her name and she's like going like this and she's like, your mom should not be acting like this. This is not right. Nothing that we did from the surgery should have caused this. And so I'm like, why are you acting like this? You're the freaking doctor. Who acts like that in front of a patient or a patient's family member? So I just thought that was uncalled for. Calls the surgeon, you know, then he comes to check on her and he's like, you know, we did take um, a mass out of her brain. It's a big surgery. It takes a while for them to come back. So it, basically each day, you know, she eventually started to progress and it wasn't like she was back to herself or anything like that. I mean, she just, she would be awake a little bit more. She could talk a little bit more. She had more um, alertness I guess you could say. They finally move her out of ICU and then she's in a room so they are trying to um, talk about getting her into um, a rehab center. So they're pretty much just throwing all of this information at me and you know when I have to take care of things I can get it figured out and I can take care of it but this was just a lot. Like at this point I was like I can't even take care of myself like how am I supposed to take care of my mom and figure all of this stuff out like I just and I don't mean to cry because it's not that kind of video you know I'm just telling you how things work but it just sucks like I feel so bad for people who have to take care of their parents and you know like it's just a lot of work Pretty much, you know, I'm like looking into what place to put her in and I have a friend who her husband had some things go on and so they were in a rehab place. So thank goodness that I just had her to talk to and ask her questions, you know, and she helped a lot. So I was very appreciative of that. She was in rehab from like um, October to maybe mid-November for a few weeks and like I said, you know, each week she was getting better, but I could still notice that there was a change about her and just that it wasn't how she used to be. Eventually she gets tired of being in rehab and, you know, she does well enough where they're like, she can go home if you are able to stay with her and make sure that she's safe. So I was like, okay, I can do that. and. So we go home and she starts uh, home health care through that and so she did that probably for like four to six weeks maybe and they were really great and so they just came out to the house and they would work on her. They would work with her on her speech um, and writing and physical. So she really liked that because she was in her own home and she started moving around a little bit. and she. 
had to use a walker just because her balance was still off and that's kind of what started everything was that she started to lose her balance a few months prior her surgery and she had falls she was getting weak and so that's when we realized we need to get her in and that's when they found the mass on her brain. Fast forward to where they tested the mass and it was cancer. He said that he did get it all um, and they just wanted to recheck the scans in a few weeks after that. We kind of had a break because they kind of dropped the ball on getting her scheduled for um, outpatient therapy. So like at the beginning of December, early December, she started going to outpatient therapy where she was working on speech and physical therapy. It's really hard because I each phase that she has moved into of where new people are taking care of her, um, it drove me crazy because I felt like I had to, and this is going to sound weird, but I felt like I had to get to know each group that was taking care of her and it was just like by the time you got comfortable with them it was time to move on to the next group of people that would be helping her in her um, process and her phase to recovery so she's she has been doing that you know it's end of December and she's doing a little bit better to where she can walk around herself you know um, I didn't have to stay over there all the time I could start going back to work and you know, and so I would go over there to help her with her showers and to cook her food and to prep her meals just because she was still a little forgetful and just not fast and she wasn't fast like she used to be. I didn't want her to leave anything on and something happened. I didn't want her to fall. In January, you know, she's been doing better. She's still using her walker. She doesn't want to use her walker, but um, she, our plan was to hopefully get her back to work come February, but I don't know. And I'm just looking back, like maybe I should have filed for some kind of disability, um, just cause it takes a while. Cause I'm not sure if she'll be able to work. I don't really know what's in the, I don't know what the future holds with her. So it's what, in the middle of January, um, she had her scans recently because they wanted to make sure that everything was okay and just still kind of at bay. So we took her in for her MRI about two weeks ago and then there was a spot that came up on her brain, the same area where they had removed that mass and they couldn't tell if it was cancer or if it was post-op swelling. So they wanted her to do a PET scan the week after. So I take her in to do her PET scan Oh my god, this is a lot. Ugh. So we just went to go see him um, earlier this week and good news is that everything is, there's still no sign of cancer in her body and then the spot on her brain, they said that there's no sign of cancer there. They said just to continue um, doing physical therapy if she wants to try and go back to work, she can. Um, but just to take it easy and so we're thankful for that and then in about eight weeks she will have to go ahead and do another scan and it was just like usually I'm like whenever I'm in the room waiting for him to give us the news and for him to come in you know I can pretty much keep my cool because I want to stay calm for her this one like my mouth was watering it was like salivating or drooling and I was feeling very queasy and I felt like a big pit in my stomach and like you know when you have that like pain in your neck because you want to cry and I was like oh my god I can't do this and she's like what's wrong you know and I'm like I'm gonna throw up and she's like why I'm like I'm nervous you know just because seeing her look on her face it was the saddest look I've ever seen on her face and with everything that she's been through you know I was like this is gonna be it because like I've said before she was talking about you know well maybe I'll just kind of let it take over and then just let oh, just let it work out how it's supposed to and then you know she was just really worried that she did the surgery and then just all of that hard work for nothing Right now we are just continue working on physical therapy and she's going to quit her speech therapy at the end of this week 
and then I think we're gonna continue the physical for just a little bit longer. Hopefully if she does want to go back to work she can slowly transition into it and just do a few hours each day and slowly build back her um, stamina for it. That's where we're at today and sorry that this video was so rambly. I just, I wasn't sure how I was going to explain everything and it's just, I kind of haven't looked back since because it was a long, horrible, miserable, sad, scary, angry journey up till now. Like it's been hard as heck and I mean it's still hard but each week it just continues to get a little bit better like this much like that much but I'll take it so it's just still hard because I kind of I have to you know um, keep record of like her bills that are being paid of her accounting and still do my stuff too like all of my record keeping and Oh, it's just a lot guys, but I just wanted you to know how she's been doing because um, you guys have been asking me on Instagram and in the comments below and I do appreciate those of you who have asked. Sorry I've got a little emotional. Thank you so much for watching and take care. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.